we are talking about a man who is discovering young talent out there in the football world. He's my guest for today for The Big Interview. Take a look at this profile video. On Big Interview today, we dedicate it to Christian Achu and the man who first discovered him. Cheetah Football Club is a Ghanaian football club based in Kaswa in the central region of Ghana. The club currently competes in the central region zone of the Shots Division up, yeah. 2 League, which is the third tier of the Ghana Football League and the MTN up. FA Cup. Again, in 2009, Abdul Haya Yati, a Ghanaian sports executive and entrepreneur, founded the club in Kaswa as a juvenile club. The club started scouting for young prospects across Ghana and recruiting them to form a football club. In 2021, the club was named on the top 10 clubs in Africa with the most outgoing transfers of players in FIFA's 2020 Global Transfer Market Report. As of 2021, the team plays in the Central Regional Football Association Division 2 League. Some of the club's most notable players are Emmanuel Toku, Al Hassan Wakaso, and one of Ghana's finest winger, Christian Achu. Abdul Haya Yati is the man who discovered these great talents and is our guest on the big interview today. Stay tuned. If you just watched the profile video, that's my guest for today, and his name is Abdul Haya Yati. And he actually is a president for the Cheetah Football Club of Ghana. Now, this video has summed it all up. But then we get to know about him, how it all started, and how he discovered the man that we are crying because uh, God took him away from us. You know, the thing is that as we are crying, we know that God did it because he wanted to do it. And we can't question God. But as humans, we will cry, but we know he's in a better place. Let me speak with my guest for today. Abdul, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Ah, Alhamdulillah. We thank God for uh, your life and yes. for you being here today. Thanks. For those who don't know much about you, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, as you said, uh, I'm the president of Cheetah Football Club. I also double as the president of um, Cheetah Beach Soccer Club and the president of the Ghana Bodybuilding and Fitness Association. Um, I'm a soccer scout. I went to Datu's Complex School, Bubiashi, then went to Ghana Secondary Technical School, Takrade, went to Accra Polytechnic, and then traveled to London to do my scouting course and then um, designing course as well. As a young child, everybody has dreams and aspirations. What were yours? Well, honestly, I, I wanted to be an architect, and my dad also wanted me to be an architect. And that is why I pursued my schooling to GSTS, uh, did building technology, and then went to Accra Poly as well to do building construction. So when did it all change into going to scouting and football? Well, um, football has been part of my life, part of the family. Uh, my junior brother is Ishmael Yate. He played for the national team, some national teams of Ghana. And then um, I went to London to do design and designing. Uh, and then I got introduced to um, the scouting course in London because I, I always used to speak, speak about football. Mm. And then everything started from there. Mm. But... Um, Right away, Datus, I was part of the school team. I went to GSTS. I was part of the school team right from Form 1, uh, playing football, running for the school in uh, 1998, uh, senior high school three. I was uh, elected the sports prefect of um, Ghana Secondary Technical School. And uh, when I came out of it, I decided to form my own club and then Though I was doing uh, building technology, I was combining sports and then um, studies. Mm. Yeah. So did you play football yourself? Well, not to the highest level, um, school team, area team, but... Disappointed not, football yeah, player. Yeah, not top, top, yeah. 
But your brother, uh, is he the popular one who was playing for Accra House of Folk? No, that is Emmanuel Yate. Okay. My junior brother is Ishmael Yate. Yate. Okay. Yeah, he was part of uh, uh, Salas Tete um, under 17 that played in South Korea, the World Cup in South Korea. Right. Right, right. Now, uh, you've been scouting, you're doing this for quite a while now. How yep. many years? Well, I've been scouting, let me say, since um, 2006. I've, I've been scouting. I completed my scouting course in 2006. And then uh, since then, uh, that is what I love doing. Mm. What do you look out for when you're scouting for young talents? Well, there are key elements uh, that scouts look for. Uh, different uh, what a scout is actually looking for but some of them are uh, the skill in Ghana when we say the skill of a player it means that the player need know how to dribble but the skill in the eye of a scout uh, go beyond the dribbling the skill actually goes with the first touch of the player um, the passing rate the passing accuracy uh, anticipation ability to beat a man uh, crossing ability, shooting ability, that's the skill. Then we have the competitive nature of the player. Then we also look at uh, the strength and weakness of the player. Yes, and then the work ethic of the player. So these are some of the things that we, we look for. Then you come to various um, positions, what attributes of the, the player you, you look for. Right. Now, talking about all of these, you actually have picked some great talents out there and you've put them on the international market. Uh, Wakaso is one of them. And then, uh, of course, uh, the man that we are talking about today is Christian Achu. Yep. Now, let me ask you what you saw in Christian Achu that made you select him. Well, um, I was part of the scouting team that actually discovered Christian Achu from Feyenoord. It actually depends on where you're coming from. But uh, myself, uh, 2007, I got a job with FIFA accredited agency Ramp Management, which was based in uh, Canada, uh, to be the chief scout in Ghana. So myself, uh, Ramp Management project head, Graham Hidden. And then uh, the then sporting director of Sporting Lisbon, um, Paulo Cardoso, and then our um, Nigerian uh, counterpart, Chinedu. Uh, the four of us were the team that actually saw Christian playing for Feyenoord against my select side. So basically, when I got the job in 2007, in 2008, can 2008, January, uh, Ramp Management actually told me that they were uh, coming to Ghana to World Cup 2008, and then they were coming with Paulo Cardoso, and uh, they wanted me to put some players together for Paulo Cardoso to watch. They wanted me to do a good job because Paulo is on record that he discovered Cristiano Ronaldo at the age of 13. So coming with uh, a high-profile scout of search, they wanted me to do a very good job. So I took key interest in uh, the Milo games that year, um, scouting in Koforidia and in Suyani. I put together 17 young players. And then uh, I called my friend, the late coach Samade, who was uh, the technical director of Feyenoord that time, that uh, I have some visitors coming from Portugal and Canada and uh, I wanted to arrange a friendly game with uh, Feyenoord for them to come and assess my team. So Coach Ade also gave me the permission to bring my team to play against Feyenoord. So whilst we were playing in Fete, um, Christian was playing on the right flank for Feyenoord. And um, when I saw Christian running with the ball, I told Paolo, he said, let's wait a while after 20 25 minutes, we all, the four of us, came to agreement that uh, we've seen a special talent in Christian. He was so fast, explosive, small though, but uh, he had a lot of abilities in terms of beating players. And then um, we, I remember I had um, um, a, a boy playing the left back, and then the boy was a superb player, but 
Christian make him look very small and that was enough to convince us that he was a special young talent. So on that day, it was only Christian that you selected? So Paolo Cardoso actually selected three players from my scouting team, um, Alasa Wakasu, Evans Ofosentri, who went on to play the National Under-17 that, that year, Aaron Amwa, we scouted him, he was a player of Mighty Jet. Um, so these three players, uh, Paolo Cardozo chose from my select side and chose only uh, Christian Achu Trasam from Fire Not. So these four players, Sporting Lisbon actually sent invitation uh, for these four players to come to Sporting Lisbon mm. for trials. Mm. So after you found Christian Achu, what next? What happened? Well, um, when the invitation came, uh, I went to the Academy of Fire Not, and then I presented the invitation to to them. Uh, they actually told me that they were not going to allow Christian to honor the invitation because they had a school system that he not completed yet. He had to complete the school system. So I left, and then after a week, I remember uh, Christian uh, senior brother Isaac came to see me at my residence, and then he said, um, Christian told him that there was somebody who works in Fire Not who told him that I came over with an invitation from Sporting Lisbon mm -hmm. and then Fire Not are actually saying they will not let him honor the invitation. He wanted to find out from me if that was true. And I said yes. And he said, okay, um, they want to honor the invitation. I said, there is nothing I can do because he's a player of Fire Not. And then um, I remember him coming back saying to me that Christian said he have faith in me. He have he believed that I'm the only person who can help him, but I don't want to help him. So his brother should push push me to actually help him. So I remember going back to find out asking that they grant him the permission to go. They said no. So it was back and forth for one and a half years. And I remember in 2009, September, that was when I had a call from the late Coach Ade that uh, I should come over for us to do a negotiation for the release of Christian. I, I do remember they saying that Christian contract was left with three months, so I think that was why they wanted to release him finally. And then we did a negotiation, and then um, final. So initially they wanted us to pay um, 25,000 Ghana cities for him, but after a year, a year and a half, we finally paid 3,000 Ghana cities for Christian, and then they released the boy to us. So when we got him... Let, let, me, let, me, let me take you back a little bit, sorry. I just want to know, when they were proving difficult, did you feel like giving up on him and going to scout for other people? We kept scouting, uh, we kept scouting, but we knew we have a special talent. And then the boy and then the brother Isaac kept pushing me to um, fight and get his right. Uh, remember, we, we even went to the GFA status committee and the whole lot. Yes. Um, so finally, in September um, 2009, final uh, court did a negotiation and then they released the boy to us and the boy became a Cheetah FC player. Mm. Yeah. Now, talking about that, you also managed to get him into the Black Stars. Uh, you have other players in the Black Stars as well. How difficult is it to get your players to play for the national team? Well, I didn't get Christian to play in the Black Stars. Um, my role was to ensure that... So, immediately that we got um, Christian, uh, we... Inform, I informed um, my project manager, Graham, of Ramp Management, and then Graham was based in Portugal then, and then he informed FC Porto about the talent that we've got, and then FC Porto decided to send an invitation for Christian. I remember we had to fight going through visas, passport visas, and then finally um, in January, uh, we secured a visa from the Spanish embassy for him to go to Portugal for uh, the trials. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he went to the trials, um, 
He succeeded in the trials after a week. I remember he left on the 20th of January 2010. And then after five days, Paul to express interest in signing him. Um, he told me later that uh, there were six coaches um, and it seems only one had believed that they should sign him. Uh, the five were like, no, he's small, he's what? And um, they decided to sign him on uh, on loan, six month, six month loan. Mm. So they took him six month loan. He was playing for Porto, and that is where, when I got some of the videos, I was showing some of the videos to some officials in the FA that I have this talent, he's special. Till it seems finally somebody got the video and showed the video to Coach Kusia Pia, and then he invited him to the Black Star. So I did him get him into the black star mm. but uh could see up here invited him, him. Invited him. Yeah. because of the videos that you showed partly partly yeah but uh for him traveling abroad uh you were a big contributing factor yep. so it was more or less like he went out there to audition it's not that people saw him and wanted him so um when we got christian um back back a bit mm -hmm. um we were playing friendly matches with him because the, the leagues uh, have not started. And then I remember we going to Straight Road to play um, All Blacks. And then uh, Ben Foucault was there. He saw Christian and he told one Mr. Chermi, who was um, the president of Precum Chelsea at that time about the talent that he saw in Christian. Mr. Chermi invited me at NDK, his office, and then told me that they wanted to play a friendly game between Cheetah and then Brickham Chelsea. So they sponsored our trip from Kaswa to Second D to um, to play a friendly game against Brickham Chelsea. And after the game, um, Steve Pollack actually told the leaders of Brickham Chelsea that he wanted Christian into Brickham Chelsea. Um, Mr. Chairman invited both of us into his office that I should release Christian to them. I said, no, uh, we've already applied for a Portuguese visa, hoping that we get a visa for the boy to go. Uh, he said we should release the boy to them on loan. If the boy go on trials and he succeed, uh, he, he, he promised that he was going to release the boy's card uh, back to Cheetah. If he doesn't succeed in the trials, he will come and then play for Brickham Chelsea. So I remember Mr. Chermi gave us $5,000. And um, that was my first big money in football. And uh, we were crazy about receiving $5,000 at that time. With, with the notion that oh, if the boy go to Porto, they, are, they will go and give us money. They can give us about so 40 So Christian thousand. gave you the opportunity to receive your very first yep. biggest money in football. Football, $5,000. With the with mindset that um, Porto probably will give us about 40000 He's ready to give us 40000 Yeah, but we should take 5000 and loan the boy to him. So accidentally, we're in his office when uh, we had a call from the Spanish embassy asking if this is Christian Achu, yes. And that um, our visa decision was ready. So we left the office, went to the Spanish embassy. And then when we, we took the passport, uh, God be so good, um, he was granted a visa. And uh, we have $5,000 on us as well. Uh, this is a boy, honestly, with all due respect to him, who had nothing. Um, I remember he always wear cheetah out in uniform. We ran straight to Kantamato, changed 1,500. <sighs> Change um, $1,500 and then um, got him some clothes, some bags, and then uh, we told Porto about securing the visa. They sent his tickets for him to travel. I escorted him to the airport and uh, that night when I was leaving the airport, he sent me a text message to say that uh, 
he really appreciates uh, whatever I've done for him. He knew that I could help him. He had faith in me. And uh, he was traveling on the trials and he was going to succeed. He was not going to come back. He was going to make himself proud. He was going to make me proud. He was going to play football the highest level, and then the world will hear his name, Christian Achu, trust him. Um, and then he left. He went to Porto for trials. Yeah, so five days later, I got a communication from Graham saying that uh, Porto are interested in the boy. No, Christian actually told me that he was not going to come back, so the balance of the money, 3500 I shouldn't spend it. I should keep it and send the money back to Mr. Chairman. So when I had a communicate that uh, um, the people want to sign him on uh, a six-month loan, it was light off in Kaswa, I remember, and I had to move from Kaswa to somewhere around West Hills for internet cafe to print the document, sign the document, and send it back to him. I was feeling a bit reluctant because um, I had $3,500 with me. And I was like, Christian should come back so that I can keep this $3,500. But later, something struck me that, no, go and do it for him. So I, I wake up, took the trotter to West Hills, print the document, sign the document, send it to them. Yeah, Christian became. Um, a Porto player. Within a six month loan he had growing and um, Porto decided to extend the six month loan to another one year loan. That was the period that they took him to Zurich to play in the FIFA um, under 20 youth cup and then in that tournament he actually won the best player as well. So from there everything was history. He went on loan to Real Ave, he won the best player for Real Ave. He came back, um, he played in the Champions League for Porto, playing in the league for Porto. So he got invited into the Black Star. So Chelsea came by him for 3.6 million, I think. So that was the bit that I played in Christian life before he traveled to FC Porto. Great story we're hearing this morning. It's quite emotional to hear everything. But then let's also talk about your personal relationship with him. Uh, his manager and, you know, your worker. However, you had a very solid relationship with him. Tell us how it was. Well, um, Christian, as I said, he told his brother that he had faith, he had believed that I was the one that, I, that was going to help him. Uh, he kept that faith in me. Uh, Any time that uh, he needed advice, he would call me to seek my opinion. He had a, an agent, Graham was his agent, later Tony Appiah, later Nana Secher. But any time that you have to do any move, I remember when Newcastle wanted to buy him from Chelsea after the loan, he asked my opinion about it. Any time that you have to move, he will seek my opinion. Um, he was having a fundraising um, in Newcastle. He invited me to come to Newcastle and be with him. When he was at uh, Bournemouth, um, picture on the screen, he invited me as well to come to Bournemouth. Yes, so our relationship, any time that he's in Ghana, he have to try and see me, even if it is five days, one week, he have to see me. You have to come to the, the camp, uh, visit the boys, uh, give them pep talks. Uh, so our relationship was good. Um, so the unfortunate incident happened. Mm. Yeah, we had a good relationship. Yeah. Fantastic to hear. And um, of course, as you had a good relationship, can we talk a little bit about when he was going to, you know, Turkey? Like you're saying, everywhere he went to, he told you. What about Turkey? Yeah, he had to go to Turkey. Um, he was in Saudi Arabia, and then he had to 
end the contract and then um, go to Turkey to go and play. Yes. If you think that is what is going to make you happy, you feel good about it, why not? I've been giving you my blessings since day one. So boy, you can take it up. Mm. Yeah. So what discussion exactly went on the day that he told you he was moving to Turkey? Yeah, this is what I said. That's all? Yeah. Why not? You can take it up. It's a new challenge and I wish him well. Mm. Yeah. What's your fondest memory of Christian Achu? Well, um, I, w I will still leave it with um, when I accompany him to the airport to take his first flight. Um, saying goodbye to him was emotional, uh, but it was I was very happy that finally I am getting him out. And uh, let me say, Christian was the first player that Cheetah took out followed by Alasa Wakasu, yeah. And um, that day when he sent the message, I decided to keep the message. Initially, I thought it was one of those cheap talks from uh, players. But to the day that he had his last flight, which was a cargo section of Turkish Airways back to Ghana, to receive his body. That was, that was the conclusion of me saying that yes, he really did what he promised. Because at that point, the EPO actually made a statement that uh, there should be a minute silence at all games for him. You have bigger organizations like FIFA, um, tweeting, condolence, and the poorest village were talking about Christian, the wealthiest people were talking about Christian, everybody. Then I said, yes, the world have heard of Christian actually. Difficult way for the world to hear of him, isn't it? Yep. He played his part, uh, playing for the Black Star at, at the World Cup, the Afcon, winning the Afcon Best Player 2015, winning the the goal of the tournament. His age playing for um, Porto at the Champions League, being bought by a big team like uh, Chelsea. <clears throat> yes, he, he played his part. Uh, already people knew about him. The other side that people never knew so much was how good he was of the field. We need to see everybody happy. He works with uh, a crime check, uh, the orphanage and other stuff. So when he went away, that's when people <clears throat> start talking about that other aspect of him and then people say wow he was a special player on, on the field and off the field as well he was a special person did you know about that side of his or you knew only about the field no i knew about it because his orphanage is chased by um, our base in sayambriku and we've done a lot of works together myself and him have gone there to sign his um, his photos for the kids take pictures, we train the boys together. That's yeah, so I know about some of these things that we're doing. Not all. I know about what he was doing with the prisoners, with crime check and other stuff, yeah. Mm. yeah but mostly with some of the things that he do, he didn't want people to know. So some of them, he would not even tell me about it. He would do it secretly. And later you get people. I remember one big uh, personnel in the FA came to see me that uh, the wife is not feeling well and they wanted me to connect him to Christian. So I gave him Christian number to contact him personally. The person came back to me to say that Christian gave him 300,000 Ghana cities. Yeah, that's much. Because the wife was on life support and every day, blah, blah, blah. That much. That's, that's the person we're talking about. Wow. Yeah. 
I mean, this is one of the most uh, emotional um, big interviews we've had here. Um, the man Christian Achu goes home this Friday. Um, we are talking to the man who found him and made him international. And his name is Abdul Hay Ayate. And he's telling us exactly his relationship with Christian. And what he said is, Christian said he wasn't going to come back until the world hears of him. And the day that Christian's body came to Ghana, that is when those words made true meaning to him. Because at that time, the world had heard of him. Was it the right way? Well, for him, Christian had made his name by signing on to big teams that made him who he is. And so we celebrate him, even though he's not alive today, we still celebrate the man, Christian Achu. Abdul, I know this is difficult for you. And you know, as it's difficult for you, it's difficult for me as well, because sitting in this seat, having to have a conversation about a man that we're not hoping to hear of something like this, but hoping to hear that, you know, he's bringing back probably the World Cup. This is what we wished for. But God's ways are not yeah. our ways. Now, you told us your relationship with him. You've told us, uh, you know, uh, how you found him. You've told us all that. But what we haven't heard about is what motivated him all these years to be so generous to people. Well, um, I give you this story before I come to your question. I remember when Christian was with FC Porto, the loan contract that he signed says that he'll be paid 800 euros a month. I was there one day when I had uh, a Western Union a notification that I've received 800 euros from Christian. I was happy. I called, followed through after. And then he said, he sent me 800 euros. I said, yes. And he converted the 800 euros to CD, which I don't remember to. And he said, uh, I should give the money to a church that was just by our resident. And I asked him, all the money? He said, yes. And honestly, we didn't have money in the, in the house at that time. Why all the money? He said, when he was going on trials, he had a promise with God that if God made him succeed. His first three months salary, he will give it to the church. So he played with me, I should go and give all the money to the church. And I did exactly what he said. The church bought some instrument and then invited me to take a picture of it and send it. Now, that was a boy at the age of 18 years. A boy who came from a very poor home boy who have gone into Europe to see money, 800 euros. That's 2010, I'm talking about 800 euros. And saying, go and give that 800 euros to the church because that is what I promised God. But I bet you 95 or 99% of young boys who make it to Europe with this mm -hmm. condition will never fulfill that promise that they made. So right from the onset, you know the person that we're talking about. So to your question, Christian, for me, was a Christian. He was an angel on earth. That is sometimes some of the things that make us feel to be proud to be associated with such a person. God sent him to do a job. He completed his job very short though, and he's happy wherever he is, so that make you happy. Um, could have a purpose for all of us. So Christian uh, was a very general boy. He knew where he came from, very poor home. As I was speaking earlier, I said, the only thing that he used to wear most often was cheetah out in uniform. And we had to chain 1,500 to buy clothes for him. I listened to one of his interviews when he was in Chelsea. He said uh, where he used to live. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I didn't used to 
know about his past, but with that interview where he used to live in the wooden structure, blah, blah. So he wanted to see everybody happy. Um, I listened to one interview by Ibrahim Sandy, and it was when the boy was in the blaster camp, he saw a little girl selling uh, orange, called the little girl, why are you not in school? Uh, gave his number to the little girl to give to uh, the mom, bought all the orange. And when Ibrahim Sandy saw him, he told him not to tell anybody. And uh, he helped the girl to go to school. So you always want to see people happy. Mm. And I think it's basically because of him knowing where he come from. And then he thinks everybody should be happy. I know there are so many footballers who have a lot of money who not want to do this. But again, as I said, he's a Christian, he's an angel on earth. He was an angel on earth, so I think that's what I can say. You're like a brother, big brother to him, or a father to him. You know, uh, of course, if you find somebody, you're like a father or a brother to the person. Yep. Tell us your proud moments. Anytime you see him play so well, how do you feel? I feel very, very happy because you get a lot of calls coming through. Even from the director of Fire Mode, Mr. Brooklyn, he'll mm -hmm. call me and say, your boy is playing. So you feel very proud to be associated. You feel very happy that people want to affiliate or associate you with such a talent. I feel very happy that I went through that moment of one and a half years because of what he said, what his brother said to me, Mr. Yate. They used to call me Mr. Yate. Please help us, please help the boy, please help. That I took that challenge and uh, should I use the word cut him free from fire not or yeah. And then um, playing, you will be very happy associating yourself to him. I remember on his first Black Star game in Kumase, he said I should come over. Um, they put me in a hotel. He made sure that I uh, got one of his tickets that was given to the, Bl the Blaster players. We spoke before that game, and I told him, you have a special quality, he can dribble. Uh, with, with the coach restrict him not to dribble. Once in a while, he should dribble. And I want him to uh, take three shots. He, he did that, and uh, one went over the bar, went close to the pool, and then he scored one. And afterwards, I was in the stand and I saw the late Coach Ade hugging him down there and I was happy and that uh, that moment Coach Ade was hugging him because it was Coach Ade that released him to me finally. And then uh, when we met at the hotel, Kudin Tulip in Kumasi, after the game, he said, you saw Coach Ade hugging me? I said, yes. I said, I was happy. Yeah, so some of these things make you very proud. So this conversation, like I said earlier, is all about Christian Achu and remembrance of him. He goes home on Friday. Most of you know him from the Ghana Black Stars. Those of you who are big fans of Chelsea, uh, of other teams that he played for, of course, today is all about you. Uh, you sending in your messages uh, about Christian Achu, your fondest memories about him, especially how he used to play for your favorite teams. He played for Newcastle, he played for so many teams. Let's hear from you. Share your fondest memory about him. And if you have any message also to wish the family well, do send it to our WhatsApp line and read it live on air. My guest today is the president for Cheetah Football Club, and he's the man who found Christian Achu and placed him on the international market. Let's talk about the day that the earthquake took place in Turkey. Did you talk to him? Well, I was actually, my team was actually playing the scouting game at Achimota, so I was there and I was in the stand when a journalist called me to say that uh, there is an earthquake that is happening in uh, Turkey and then uh, we've learned that they are now finding Christian. Have you spoke to him? I said, just a moment, I'll call you later. So I called him, called him, 
and then it was not going through. So I sent him a, a WhatsApp message, hoping that it would take two, but it was not taken two, it was only one. And then I went on uh, social media, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, to see what is happening, and the news keep coming. And I was disturbed. They found this person, he's left a Christian, and then they're spotting the right. I said, what is happening? Keep praying. Yeah, so that's how I, I got the news. When you heard the news, what did you tell God? <laughs> uh, my prayers was, uh, not him. He doesn't deserve this. He's a good person. He doesn't deserve this. And I pray that the Almighty, out of his grace, have mercy upon him. Yeah. Hmm. There were about three times uh, where we heard that he had been found. Not once, but about three. That same day we heard he had been found. And then we heard he had not been found. Then we heard he had been found, but in the hospital. Then we heard he hadn't been found again. Let's talk about the first one. Well, you heard he had been found. How did you feel? Well, um, when I heard that he was being found, I was happy. I said, Alhamdulillah. And then a uh, moment ago, we heard that it was, not, it was not true. So I got in touch with the agent. And then the agent said, let's keep our fingers crossed. He's in touch with the club. And then anything he relate to me. So the next morning of the incident, 6 a.m., I remember, I was speaking with the agent, Nana. When Nana told me that, yeah, tell me call you back, the club is calling me. And that was when the club actually told Nana that they found Christian and he's in the hospital. So Nana called back to tell me that they found your boy, he's in the hospital. They said, uh, you have difficulty in breathing, and then he have some injury on his leg. I said, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, once he's been found alive, that's the most important thing. So around 2 p.m. that day, then I called Nana, I asked Nana, but if it is true that they found Christian, what hospital is he? So we start asking ourselves questions, and then Nana decided to speak to the club. So what hospital is he? And then now um, the club need to come out to say, They've not actually seen the boy themselves. Then it became something different. How did you feel when you heard that? Were you angry at the club? Um, disappointing. But I want to understand them as well because of the situation. They were not on the ground as well. They have to rely on information from the grounds as well. So probably that was the information that somebody had also given to the club. But that was not important. The most important thing was to keep praying and hoping that you'll be found alive. At that point, did you feel in your spirit that there was maybe something wrong, but they were not able to tell you? No, never. We actually thought that Christian is a very strong boy, he's a very strong athlete, that regardless of whatever, he will succeed. And we also feel that Personally, I felt um, he doesn't deserve this. If it is true he's alive under the rubble, then he doesn't deserve this. Because he's a, such a good chap and he, he doesn't deserve going through all this. Yeah. Some messages coming in. Christiana, she's a great loss, not only to the football fraternity, but to the poor and needy as well. It's really sad watching this program. I can feel the pain that man is going through. Ato Will is from Cape Coast. Ato, I feel it here too. It's not easy for me hosting the show this morning, I must say. I'm Gideon from Spain Tech. My condolences to his entire family. Ghana's a country. This is what we have to be doing. And we shouldn't be selfish. We should follow the footsteps of Christian Achu Chasam. Okay. Um, Christian Achu is an angel from heaven and he's at heaven now. Atta from Kumasi. Thank you. You can also send in your messages and we'll read it live on air. My guest for today is Abdul Haye. Uh, Yate, and he is actually the one who found Christian Achu for the international market. And uh, hearing these stories actually are uh, quite emotional. Now, the roller coaster emotions today he's been found. You're happy tomorrow, you are sad. The next day, 
what what was the final resource that you wanted god i i just want to be a peace right yes um we're just hoping that we see him alive um alive we knew what we were going to do we sent uh, his brother isaac and then the sister and then the, the agent nana to be in turkey to go and find him um so we're just praying and hoping that christian will come alive mm. Uh, so you you read stories that you get in touch with Nana and Isaac who are on the ground anything yet and nothing yet we're still hoping so that Did was Did you give up hope at a point? Never. Even the day that Nana called me to say that uh Christian was no more I can say that was the first time that I had dream about him. and then um in the dream we were sitting on top of a building and then there were people downstairs shouting his name and i told him christian the people want to see you get up so when you got up to wave to the people he wanted to throw money to them i said no stop there will be a stampede so we just wave to the people and that was it and when i woke up we uh, dressing up to go to training i just had a call from nana hoping that he was coming to tell me they found christian but i said yeah we found christian christian is no more yate so he showed himself to you before he left yeah not only me i think about two three people also said so but that aspect of me yeah and i couldn't be, when when i had this dream in the morning I told my wife Christian is alive this is what i saw he's alive not long i got the news <sighs> let's talk about uh, the family preparations towards the funeral uh, obviously the funeral is on friday yeah um before then let me read a few messages because my phone is really buzzing with a lot of messages and so today i'm going to be very loyal to you at home hi i'm called dennis i want to send my condolences to the family and may he find comfort in the bosom of the lord losing a chu is a big blow to the entire humanity not only ghanians or the football fraternity my condolences to the family very proud of him and mr abdul hay the lord knows best gilbert from pa paga kajelo okay um Hmm, Achu is a hero. No one like him a whole in Africa. Since I heard I cannot work. I'm home doing nothing because sadness is in my heart. I'm in Spain sex. Okay. Um my name is my name is AMG Kimski. My condolences to the entire family. RIP Achu. Okay. Achu was named Ghana Messi because of his skills. He will forever remain Messi in our memories. May his gentle soul rest. well with his maker adaboru evans from bongo the family is ready for the funeral on friday yeah let's talk about how preparations are going so far well so far so good um i think kenya's witness um the one week observation and uh, we want to say big thank to ghana big thank for the love people came in their numbers from all walks of life politicians musicians past footballers present footballers I remember Kumasi Asante Koto coming over the FA president the GFA personnel sports ministry yeah everybody was around and then I want to say a big thank to the man of the land his excellency na kufado we we paid him a visit then he said he want to be in the country while christian is laid um to stone state and um the the government in general have been very supportive is a state support uh, funeral very very supportive the government of Ghana the ministry of youth and sports played a key role in the 
Christian funeral tomorrow. You can take that away from the Ghana Football Association as well. The president of the Ghana Football Association needed to be um, at the FIFA Congress, but he decided to stay back for the funeral. People have really showed Christian love, the family of Christian love. I remember the president of Liberia, uh, Dr. Opawia, sent a delegate from, from Liberia they came to donate some money to the family. So preparation is very well. Um, as we speak, um, the grounds at the state, the forecourt of the state house is being put in place. And um, the arrangement is the body will be picked from the 37 to the family house and laid in state at 6 a.m. on uh, Friday morning. Then from, Friday, from 6 a.m. to 8.30 when the chief of staff will come far past the body. Anybody can far past the body and see the body. And then service starts at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 11 will be done with service and then the body will be taken for burial. Right. So all are cordially invited. Yes, please. Let me take you back a little bit. Do you have any regret whatsoever with you giving your blessing to him to move to Turkey? No. As a Muslim, we believe that everything happened for a purpose. It's painful, yes, but I've been taught that anything that happened in my life, I say Alhamdulillah. As I said, God has reason why he called Christian at this moment. I'm very happy as well. Don't get me wrong, that uh, maybe God have called him at this time. When you hear people saying a lot of good things about him, probably it was at a point, this point where Christian was going to divert from the good things he was doing. We don't know. So, not regretting giving my blessing to him to go to Turkey. That's what was meant for him. And when he scored the goal, you heard about it before the earthquake, right? Yes. I had heard about it before the earthquake. He was actually at his friend's place and then left the friend's place. 20 minutes and an earthquake happened. Right. He had a flight that he had to leave. Christian was not meant to play that game. And then he was put on a game. He had, so he had a flight to go to London. And then because of the goal, celebration, cancel the flight. The friend's place come 20 minutes, the incident happened. So it like things were not really working in his favor. He first of all was not supposed to play the game. Yeah. And they put him in the game. Yeah. He, and went he to, came on. He scored. And he scored the goal. He went and to then visit a 90, friend. 95th minute, I think, he scored the goal. And he went to visit a friend. So he cancelled the flight. When they visit a friend, they play game. Left the friend place, got there, called a friend, have got him home. 20 minutes after, boom. Did you speak to him when he scored the goal? No. The last time I spoke to him was on Friday. He's roofing a building for the orphanage and then he was trying to get uh, the project manager to send him some pictures and videos to see the level where they've got into. So it seems he was having difficulty in reaching him, so he called me that I should tell him he wants the pictures and the videos or if I can go there myself and get him. That was the last time we spoke. Will you say he scored the goal of doom, the goal to his death? It depends on what angle you you actually coming from, but that is what I'm saying. Everything was just arranged to be this way. Do you think it's God's arrangement? Yes, that is what I believe. Because you were happy he scored a goal, and everybody will be happy he scored. For instance, he took that free kick, and Sky rocked the free kick. <laughs> Christian, what is that? You could have done better. And the better, or the best he could have done was to score. He scored. 
Yeah. Now, let's come back to family. Uh, when the parents heard about it, were you there? The mom is not alive. The mom went uh, passed away, I think, two, three years ago. The dad is also not alive. So it's just him and his siblings? Yes. There are 12 brothers and sisters. And he and then his twin sister are the last. So he's the last born. Yeah. So the 12 are, both, are for both mother and father, or yeah. different yeah. mothers and different yeah. fathers. Same. Yeah. And is he the, what, the most successful amongst all 12? I can't say. <laughs> but but it, look, it looked likely footballers are, are wealthy. So yeah. was he the breadwinner, sort of? Yes, I can say. And now they've lost their breadwinner. How is the mood like? Nobody will be happy if you lose somebody special to you. So obviously, sad moment. Mm. Let me ask you this. In Africa, when somebody Don't dies... Don't ask me a question, I will cry. Don't cry. <laughs> In Africa, when somebody dies, people believe that it could be a spiritual thing where somebody is behind it. Have you heard anybody in the family say something like that? No. No. They feel it's from God. Yeah, everybody is now coming to terms with it. Probably on Friday, that mood will swing again, but everybody is coming to terms with it that Christian was a special person brought to the family. Even at his death, they have left the family name I. Let's talk about the wife and children. Have you spoken to them? Yeah, periodically. Even yesterday, I was up here. Do the children understand what is happening or they are too young for that? Um, I can't say, but uh, when the incident was happening that he's been found, he's not found. I asked her how the children are faring. He said, they are, not, they are not happy, they are confused, they want to see their father. Now they can't see their father again. Yeah. Are they coming down for the funeral? Yes, please. So we are expecting them when? Today or tomorrow? Security reasons, I can't say. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let me read some messages and I'll ask you my final question. That's okay? Fine. All right. Um, this one says, tell Mr. Abdul to cheer up, though it's painful. He, Abdul, is an instrument to lead many. God will replace Achu for you okay good morning my name is martin from asemda in inzima i am following your show but i am also sad this morning thanks to mr abdul for his support to our great brother uh, till his death christian is a very good person and his good deeds shall remain in our hearts r.i.p christian Achu. um may allah swa grant him jana and may god bless and protect the family and the children okay um, I can't stop crying this morning. My name is Ralph Salma from Tamale. You guys have made me cry this morning. R.I.P. Achu. Okay. Um, my name is uh, Juliana Kento from Sequa. My condolence to the family and Mr. Hay. My condolence to the family, friends, teammates, fans, and all Ghanaians. Indeed, Achu was one in a million. My sister, kindly tell Miss Ayate for me that Allah knows best, and I believe. His next actual will be soon. Apia Hayford, the young boy from Inkranza who plays for Cheetah, will also um, will also be like Achu soon. Time is the reason. Evans Kwabana Sapombwating, former administrative manager for Inkranza Warriors. Okay. Um, I do have a lot of messages. Very sad moment. My condolences to the family and the manager, Mr. Hay. RIP, bro. My best player in Black Star, best in Africa. Forever in our heart, your legacy lives on. Graham Maestro inside East Legon Hills. Biggest condolence, but uh, please, nobody seems to mention Achu's biological parents' name. Please, some of us want to know so we can share with him. So do you want to mention their names or do you know their names? Mm -hmm. Not really, no. do you? Okay, but what he's saying is that they are both, uh, you know, they're both passed, so they are not alive anymore. But uh, talking about all of these, um, you know, let me read a few more. I'll come back to you. Greetings, I want to comment that I choose death is very painful. But one thing for sure is the Bible said, if the days are not cut short, no soul will receive salvation. 
this is what I use to comfort myself and I want to share with all those in pain and the family as well. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Good morning. It's sad uh, hearing all the story of Christian, but my question here is, why is he the only person of the club involved in the incident? Till now, I don't believe he's dead. So my second question to Mr. is, did he confirm himself? Is, uh, is the body really what they brought? Yep. You saw the body? Yep. How did you feel when you saw the body? <laughs> Devastating. Yeah. What went through your head? Well, um, first of all, keep asking the, the brother and then the agent who were in Turkey that you saw the body. So yes, saw the body. It's Christian. Christian is normal. Initially, I didn't want to show the body to the, the brother and then the agent. But finally, they did. So they saw the body. Yeah. And you? Yeah. When you saw him, did you ask him why he left so soon? No. I couldn't stand it. I just turned back. I turned away. Have you asked God why he took him so soon? You can't question God. I'm a Muslim. It says, from him we come and from him we shall return. Yeah. All right. More messages coming in. Um, so, yes, you heard that Visayati has seen Christian Atru's body. Okay, so hi, I'm a goody FGS. We'll really miss him. I'm from Nigeria, but I watch his matches. Okay, goody. Um, so many messages coming in. I'm struggling to even read some of them. Um, quickly, I'll just do one more and then we go. All right, so good morning, Christian Atru. May your soul rest in peace. God should give you good place. Uh, my my is Boyle, my name is Boyle Francis that my dream is to play Cheetah FC okay so somebody wants to play Cheetah FC uh, maybe he will take into consideration you know having you on board we have so many messages coming in but what I want to ask you right now you have accepted that Achu is gone right and he's no more yes what will be that thing about Achu that you will never forget um so many too. But one of them would be the quality that he had, the talent that he had on, on the field of play. So different, explosive. I will never forget the talent that Christian had. And another would be how generous he was. Yeah. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. So you see him finally on Friday. Yes. What will be your words to him? Uh, may Allah Almighty, out of his grace, give this beautiful soul a good place in heaven. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you as well. We are very grateful. The fans are watching. Say something to them. Well, um, Christian came for a purpose. He came to serve uh, his country. He came to serve mankind. And uh, it's a difficult moment for all of us. But uh, let's pray that the Almighty keep him safe wherever he is. I believe Christian is happy wherever he is now. Yeah. Do you wish he was alive? Yes. If you meet him today, what will you tell him? I will embrace him. Thank you so much for being here. Thank I've been you. having a conversation with a man who found Christian Achu for the international world. His name is Mr. Abdul Hay Yati, and he is a president for Cheetah FC Football Club. And he's helped us with a big interview today. Uh, hopefully, he will discover somebody else. But for the family who have lost Christian, it's not just you. We all stand and mourn with you in this difficult time. Of course, Christian goes home on Friday. We'll be there to support you. And whatever it takes, we'll pray with you as well. And hopefully God will take you out of this pain and make you smile again. This has been The Big Interview.